Mr. Balpreet Singh Bhopati. Good morning. WSO submits that state religious neutrality is a charter value that constrains the ability of courts to judicially review the membership decisions of religious associations. When the court exercises its, ju its jurisdiction to judicially review the membership of a private religious body, even where it implicates civil or property interests of an individual, it's departing from the charter value of religious state neutrality. When we have a charter right. So we believe that the charter value, uh, even in private situations, uh, is applicable and it underlies those uh, charter, uh, charter rights. So we believe that only where there's an overriding public interest at stake that requires the state to no longer remain neutral, uh, the court should only intervene in that sort of a situation and only where it would reinforce or advance the free and democratic values of the charter. In doing so, you would have to have a net salutary effect that is a benefit uh, with respect to the free and democratic values of the charter. So the court has recognized in Saguenay that religious state neutrality creates a public space free from coercion, pressure, and judgment, and it protects individual freedom and dignity. And furthermore, for a multicultural state, it helps and preserves uh, that nature of the multicultural state. Religious neutrality extends not just for the, to the state, but also to its institutions, including the courts. And the charter value of religious state neutrality is core to the legal framework that the court has developed around Section 2A and Section 27 of the charter. The courts recognized in Amsalem that requiring the state or its institutions, like the court, to interpret matters of faith interferes with profoundly held personal beliefs. And the state's not in a position to be an arbiter of religious dogma. The state can't determine what's correct belief or it can't determine between various interpretations of belief. A state departs from neutrality is no longer neutral or secular when it chooses a certain religious belief over another. Multiculturalism is premised on the basis of equality of all religious groups and cultural groups. When one particular religious group or belief is chosen over another, it creates a hierarchy between believers or between groups. Maintaining and enhancing multiculturalism in Canadian society requires a sense of equality between these religious groups and communities. We recognize, however, that the state cannot and should not remain neutral to all beliefs and practices that are religious in nature. We believe that the state can de depart from that neutrality where there is an overriding public interest and where there's actual harm uh, being created by remaining neutral. We believe that creating a free and democratic uh, society, which is the aim of the charter, where it's, fo where it's forwarded, where it's advanced, the state can intervene in that sort of a situation. But for the state to negate the good that's achieved by maintaining neutrality, the result or objective being sought by intervening must be greater than what would be attained by remaining neutral. Any intervention that does not meaningly further these principles won't reach the threshold of an overriding public interest that permits the state to deviate from its neutrality. Specifically with respect to membership, we believe that who to worship with is a core part of freedom of religion. Membership decisions, of course, are covered by religious uh, freedom, but as the other interveners have said, the process that gets to that decision is also a part of that freedom of religion. Putting external standards or normative judgment on that deliberation, on that process, is problematic. By reviewing a decision to reject or deny membership to an individual and providing its reasonings as to whether the decision was substantially or procedurally fair, the court's imposing its view on what is appropriate over that religious community. Whatever standard the court sets to determine adequacy becomes the standard of the state on these religious matters, and a hierarchy is created between those who are determined to have done it wrong and those who, are, who have done it right. So with respect to reviewing membership decisions, our submission is that the charter value of religious state neutrality allows the court to exercise the judicial, judicial power of judicial review over membership decisions only where there's an overriding public inter interest at stake. And this will be only in very rare instances where the Charter's broader free and democratic aims are at stake and deviating from neutrality would be important to preserve or promote these objectives in a meaningful way and where maintaining neutrality result would result in actual and significant harm. 
Absent these exceptional circumstances, W submits that the court should not exercise the power of judicial review over membership decisions of religious associations. And this is important to preserve and maintain the free and democratic aims of Canadian society and also the notion of equality that forms the bedrock of, secular, of our secular and multicultural nation. Thank you. Mr. Chipper.